Good afternoon. Welcome to CAD Dimensions Lunch and Learn. What's new in SolidWorks 2013 for CAD administrators? My name is Franco Rotoli, and I'll be walking you through uh, some of the great new enhancements to SolidWorks 2013 on the back end. So this is uh, this webinar is dedicated for uh, CAD administrators. So we're not really going to be talking about too much SolidWorks core functionality. We're going to be talking more about installs and and different types of uh, back end information for CAD administrators, those, those of you who install SOLIDWORKS for multiple clients or if you want to look at SOLIDWORKS 2013 feature enhancements then you're going to want to tune in to our next three webinars where we will be talking about the what's new as far as SOLIDWORKS goes from a user standpoint. Okay let's jump right in. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, some of you or all of you hopefully have heard that SOLIDWORKS 2013 no longer is supported on Windows XP. So if you have any users that have an XP box, you're going to want to upgrade them to Vista or later, preferably Windows 7, before you upgrade to SOLIDWORKS 2013. Otherwise, the install will not work. On a good note, eDrawings is still supported. So if you have auxiliary machines or some other machines that may be a little bit older, you can still install eDrawings on those, um, as well as the Solid Network License Manager if you have a machine that's uh, not on Windows 7 or Vista that uh, is managing your licenses, that's still okay. All right, a quick agenda. What we're gonna talk about today is some performance enhancements in SOLIDWORKS 2013. SOLIDWORKS 2012 actually rolled out a clean uninstall, which we'll take a look at, um, which helps us completely remove SOLIDWORKS 2012, along with some registry keys and download locations, things like that. Uh, we're also gonna be talking about an Active Directory push in SOLIDWORKS 2013. They have implemented now, if you're on Active Directory, you can actually push the installs to the uh, to your clients without having them have to pull from an admin image. Uh, we'll also talk about a new feature in SolidWorks 2013, or that they just rolled out when they rolled out SolidWorks 2013. It's called the Admin Dashboard. That's actually on the Customer Portal, and uh, that is a way for admins to monitor their machines um, as far as drivers, system specs, things like that, free hard drive space. It's a really neat tool for admins. And then finally, we're going to talk very quickly about backwards compatibility. And we have a demo that we're going to do in the SolidWorks What's New webinars. We'll just be talking a little bit about it today. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to use the chat window on the webinar, as we will be answering uh, even as the presentation is moving forward. Otherwise, please feel free to give any of our offices a call. And one of our AEs will be very happy to, uh, to discuss any changes in SOLIDWORKS 2013 or any questions you may have with uh, any of your administrator duties as far as rolling out the, the next version. Okay, there's been a lot of enhancements uh, as far as performance goes in SOLIDWORKS 2013. The only one I'm really going to talk about in this forum is drawing view updates now support multi-cores, which is a, a big, big enhancement. I know a lot of people have been asking that for, uh, for that. A lot of people have been asking when is SOLIDWORKS going to take advantage of multiple core CPUs. Well, here we go. This is the beginning. Um, in SOLIDWORKS 2013, each view can be assigned a separate core, and you don't have to do that. The, the SOLIDWORKS does it, SOLIDWORKS and Windows work together to do that, where it solves the, the different views using different cores. So obviously drawing views solve much, much faster because they're, they're done concurrently. Uh, again, a lot of new enhancements uh, as far as performance goes in SOLIDWORKS 2013. This is the only one I'm going to be touching on in this venue. Okay, let's jump into the SOLIDWORKS 2012 Clean Uninstall. Again, this was um, rolled out in SOLIDWORKS 2012. This is a new feature in SOLIDWORKS 2012, but uh, most of you haven't really gotten the chance to play around with this because you were installing 2012, not uninstalling 2012. So let's go ahead and, and jump into the Clean Uninstall. We can see here, if I go into my uh, control panel and programs and features, that there are multiple versions of SOLIDWORKS installed in this machine. We have SOLIDWORKS 2012 and 2011. I'm going to only uninstall 2012 in this case. The standard installation manager comes up and we choose which programs we want to install. But we also have down here at the bottom advanced options where in this case it's perform by default it's performing a standard uninstall. If you click change now there's checkboxes where you can remove registry entries, data files, download files. In this case, this computer doesn't have any download files on it, so the checkbox is grayed out. 
It also gives you a little summary at the bottom here where you can see exactly what is being removed. It's very important that you look at this very closely before you hit uh, remove because it can, uh, it can have adverse effects if it deletes files that, that you may not want. We also have logging. Uh, don't forget that we can right click in the upper left hand corner and we can choose the logs that we, uh, that we want to create. Again, it summarizes it for us. We click remove items and it starts the removal process. This message, don't be afraid if you see this message, it basically just means that there's an activation active on this machine. You can choose to transfer the license back to SOLIDWORKS so you can use this license on a different machine or you can just click no if you're um, going to restall SOLIDWORKS, reinstall SOLIDWORKS on this computer. So we're going to do some, uh, some video magic here and I'm going to move forward in time. And we can see the uninstall process is complete. I'm going to choose to restart later because we're in the middle of a presentation. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our registry really quick and I want to show you exactly what it removes. I'm in HKey Local Machine. We can see we have our SolidWorks, software SOLIDWORKS and notice it did not remove the entire SOLIDWORKS directory but it left a couple things in there. If we compare it to the SOLIDWORKS 2011 directory, there's significantly less data in there. So it's cleaning up the registry um, a little bit. It also did not remove any license information from the local machine. If we go into current user, we'll see a very similar, um, similar behavior. The SOLIDWORKS 2012 folder is empty compared to the SOLIDWORKS 2011 folder, which has quite a few um, system settings in there. Or actually, those are user settings. Okay, so that's the SOLIDWORKS 2012 clean uninstall. Very handy tool. It, it saves the admins or even the users that are uninstalling SOLIDWORKS a lot of hassle because it, it goes through and it, it cleans out all the download folders, all the temporary SOLIDWORKS folders, things like that. Again, we just want, I just want to reiterate that uh, we want to make sure that we don't have any data stored in those folders that we don't want wiped out because, you know, any any... Um, project data, things like that, templates, we want to make sure that those are all backed up. Okay, so let's take a look at the Active Directory push for an administrative image in SOLIDWORKS 2013. What this is, is if you're on Active Directory, it allows you as an admin to push the SOLIDWORKS install and uninstall from the server to your clients. So let's take a look at how that works. So we see here, uh, we are going to create an admin image using the setup.exe and we are going to create it up on our network. So we choose administrative image as our option and we're going to create a new image using the default settings. Note we can also create a 32 and 64 bit image right from the same dialog all at the same time. This is where you input your serial numbers. So what you would do is if you have a network serial number, you would input it right here or um, any standalone serial number just to get past this stage. We'll talk about customizing serial numbers in a minute. This is the screen that tells us what we're going to create the admin image, what software we're going to include in the admin image. Mind you, at this point, it's already all been downloaded just for time's sake. We can see here we have all the add-ins for SOLIDWORKS we're going to include in our admin image. We are going to also include uh, SOLIDWORKS Explorer and Workgroup PDM. Again, this is what's going to be on the admin image, not necessarily pushed out to every client. So we click back to summary, and here we have some download options. In this case, um, we choose do not download because of all, all of our files are already downloaded. And we can see that down here, the image location is going to be up on a shared drive, and the create image from, that's my download location. So we're going to go through and wait for the image to be created. We'll do some time-lapse magic here. Okay, so the image has been created. We click on the Customize Image button, and that pulls up the Administrative Image Option Editor. And here you can see we can change everything for global settings in this case. Over on the left-hand side, we have different designers. Um, in, the, in the main part of the page, we talk about what software to install, 
where to install the software. We can customize this per designer. So we can see we're clicking on different machines and for example designer 2 does not have explorer or flow or simulation or motion installed. That's why they're highlighted yellow. And you can do this for both 32 and 64 bit. On our 64 bit machines we have an FEA machine which we are going to we're going to see how we're going to deploy that a little bit differently. We click on the deploy automatically button and now we can check our different users and we can choose to install, uninstall. We just have to log in with our domain admin credentials. We click deploy and the status is going to give us a live update of what's going on. We here we just choose a network path, basically we just choose the location of our admin image. We can see that it connects to the machines and it installs and gives us a live update on whether it is successfully installed or requires reboot or failed in this case. For our FEA machine, we're going to uninstall SOLIDWORKS 2013 using the same credentials, point to the same directory, and it goes ahead and uninstalls SOLIDWORKS. Just as a reminder, in our admin directory, or in our admin image directory, there still is the start SOLIDWORKS install.hta. This is the quote unquote old way to create the admin image where a user would just browse to that location and double click that and it would install SOLIDWORKS. Again, using the same credentials set up in the option editor. If you have any questions on the administrative uh, image push, please consult the help or by all means give us a call here at CAD Dimensions. We'll be more than happy to discuss it a little bit further with you, um, but the help does outline it quite a bit. Okay, next we're going to talk about a new feature that they've created. This is not not anything that you have to install. Um, the admin dashboard is on the, on the customer portal in SolidWorks and you log in to your customer portal account I have a quick video for that. So here we're on uh, SolidWorks.com. You go into the upper corner and you click Login. And here I'm just going to log into the SolidWorks customer portal. And again, this is the same place where you go to download software, things like that. I'm going to log in as myself here. And on the left hand side under quick links, we now have a new link called the CAD admin dashboard. This is a very, very handy tool for CAD admins who monitor system information and, and SOLIDWORKS options, things like that. You can see all of the computers that are associated with my account. So you can see where my default templates are. In this case, I picked my own computer. You can see where my default templates are, any dismissed messages, external references, um, performance, machine details. This is the important one. So here we can see how much free hard drive space you have, your graphics driver, etc. You can perform an RX benchmark. And you can also click on session details where you can see how long SOLIDWORKS has been running and whether it closed successfully or terminated unexpectedly which is what the orange is. So you can see you can break it down by date. Um, down here at the bottom you can see what time the session started, what time it ended, and whether it terminated successfully uh, normally or not. And you can set baseline options. So for example if I know that my computer is the baseline for all my system options I can set it at the baseline and what it does is it compares all the other com computers to that baseline. All right, so we can see that some of these other computers have up to almost 60 different checkboxes checked in tools options. We can also see if uh, systems are running low on memory, if they have unsupported video drivers, et cetera, et cetera. And I can also, there's another way to view it. I can hit the plus sign next to it, and we can see what OS they're running, free hard drive space again, uh, what processor they're running. So this is a very handy tool if... Um, you need to upgrade a machine on your network and you want to see which one uh, needs upgrading. So the slowest machine, you can browse through it from here. You can also set red flag conditions. So I can red flag a machine if the graphics driver is not updated, if the system options don't match, etc., etc. When you click submit here, all it does is it adds a little flag next to the name. So it quickly, if you have a lot of computers, 
you can very quickly see what doesn't meet your criteria. So you can either contact that person or go to his machine and make sure that, um, in this case, update their graphics driver. So a very handy tool. No personal information is conveyed. Um, it's only system information and system options for SolidWorks. So please don't think that we're, that we're doing a big brother on you or that SolidWorks is doing a big brother on you. All it is is for SolidWorks or is for CAD admins to show or to be able to take a quick glance at their user profiles or excuse me their their user machine profiles I should say. So again a very handy feature that they added in SolidWorks 2013 um, that that's going to help system admins really make sure that their their users are using the full potential of their machines. Again the graphics driver will, option is probably one of the best ones there so you can very quickly see who's not using the latest and greatest graphic driver that SOLIDWORKS has certified so if they're having computer problems right there you know well let's go ahead and update the graphics driver and see what happens the next thing we're going to talk about is backwards compatibility again as I mentioned before we're going to do a demo for the SOLIDWORKS 2013 what's new for users so stay tuned uh, please uh, take a look at that when they come out um, in two or three weeks as a lunch and learn uh, backwards compatibility starting right now so SOLIDWORKS 2012 service pack 5 is when they rolled it out can open SOLIDWORKS 2013 files that is a, an, a huge enhancement that have been asked for for a long long time so basically, you don't have to ex from SolidWorks 2013. You don't have to export your files anymore to a STEP or a Parasolid or anything like that. You just can file open from SolidWorks 2012 Service Pack 5. So the last Service Pack of every SolidWorks release will be able to open the next release's files. They do come in. There are certain limitations, and we will discuss those when in our in our main rollout. The main limitation is you can't edit features. But if it's an assembly, you can certainly view all the uh, parts, you can view all the mates, you can add new mates, you can add components to 2013 assemblies that are in 2012, you can add 2013 components to 2012 assemblies. There's a lot of work that you can do. You can create drawings, you can measure, section, all sorts of really neat things that you can do in SOLIDWORKS 2012 SP5 on SOLIDWORKS 2013 files. Again, stay tuned to our customer what's news we will do a, a full demonstration for that. Or again, check out the What's New document in SOLIDWORKS and you can read about the all the advantages and limitations of the backwards compatibility. Okay, well that's all I had for the administrative What's New in SOLIDWORKS 2013. Again, it was kind of a hybrid between 2012 and 2013, but hopefully I answered uh, some of your questions or all of your questions with this webinar. If you had any more questions by all means please give us a call or use the chat window in the webinar I'll, I'll keep it open for a few more minutes and we'll uh, we'll answer your questions that way thank you again for attending my name is Franco Rotoli again if you have any questions that uh, you don't want to type out please give us a call at any of our offices thank you